I stand by the rod of the apostolic. I move you forward, moving to your destiny. The first thing that the prayer that engenders dominion produces is access to the voice of God. If God is not speaking into your life, you'll be in trouble. It is by prayer that divine purposes are born. When a man who dominates by prayer is praying, one of the things that he catches from the land is the voice of Yahweh. The reason is because dominion is moving to your destiny, moving to prophecy in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 52 verse 11, he said, come out from among them. He said, touch not the unclean thing. He said, they that bear the vessels of God must be clean. We don't participate with worldliness. The difference between us and the world is clear. When you come to a place, your utterances are different from the utterances of the world. When you are dressed, your dress is different from the people of the world. This is not legalism. This is modesty. This is walking as one saved and properly saved. You come to the church today, the guest music minister is dancing and everything you are seeing is the steps in the club. For shoot that kind of person from your altar, he will desecrate it. He may be the most popular musician. Don't invite him. He is carrying a wrong spirit. I was watching recently a global music concert one of the biggest in the world. And the person who was worshipping, he, he called it worship. But those of us who are spiritually discerning, we know it's not worship. We know it's performance. And we know it's of another spirit. And while he was worshipping, he was doing like this. After a while, I started doing like this. Uh -uh. I said, what kind of worship is this? Somebody now said, no, it's, he choked me. He choked me. What is he choked me? You know it. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> On a global scale, when you see such a man, know that he's already blind. He doesn't know what God is saying. He is a worldly person. And give him room, you will discover that he will sleep with four of the sisters before you wake up. I'm not talking about you can do what you feel like doing. As far as the Holy Ghost permits it, you can wear a tight trouser, you can keep your beard, you can dress as far as as, long as you want, if it is modest. But if you are part of a beard gang, you are worthy. Because one is what you want to do. Another one is an influence of a, a strange spirit. So I'm not talking about dress code. I'm not giving you a dress code. But I'm telling you, he said, love not the world. He said, they that love the world, he said, the love of the Father is not in them. Their verdict has already been passed. The moment you fall in love with the world, the love of the Father leaves your heart. First John 5, 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He said, what is in the world? The lust of the flesh. That means, those who are worldly, they are powered by their desires. He said, the lust of the eyes. And he said, the pride of life. When those indicators are what powers you, you have become worldly. And if you have become worldly, it means the prince of this world is on your matter to blind you. But the way to deal with worldliness is what? Come out from among them. Somebody will need to leave here and go and change his or her wardrobe. It's called what? Come out from among them. Somebody will leave here and go and divide, burn the bridge between him and some friends. Or between her and some friends. What is it called? Come out from among them. The Bible said concerning Daniel and his friend, he said, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We are not careful. They are rugged and dogged about their consecration to God. He said they proposed in their heart, Daniel 1 verse 8, not to defy themselves with the king's maid. Too many believers are part of them. You sing their song, you dance their dance, you talk their language, that's why you are blinded. And if you want to really maximize the cross, the first thing the cross will do is to crucify the world to you and crucify you to the world. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. They say, I am crucified to the world and the world is crucified to me. So if I go to the beer panel and sit down now, even the people in the world will know I don't belong here. I have come out of among them so much 
I don't look like them. If you still touch the unclean thing, you will not be meet for the master's use. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18, they say in the great house, they are vessels. He says, some are unto honor, some are unto dishonor. He says, if a man purges himself, then he is meet, qualified to be used for the master. Many people are too worldly for God to use them. That's why they receive an impartation. He dies after two days. The best show of some Christians is Big Brother Niger, where they legalize pornography and they sit there in the morning, they are watching. They don't know they are sending corruption and decadence into their soul. Three years ago, when a single lady slept with a man, it was an abomination. Two years ago, a married woman slept with a man. So now, when single ladies sleep with a man, it's no longer a sin. If the married one that is now a sin, next year, the next edition that will come, anybody that wants should do anything. And what you don't know is that there is a tolerance level in your mind now that when a single person sleeps with another single person who is not married on national television is normal. And you don't know that the temperature of God in your spirit has gone down. It's because you don't know the cross. If you know the cross, you will come out from among them. Those things don't move you because you will despise it. The Bible spoke concerning God. He said, Thou, O Lord, out of a purer eyes, he said, your eyes cannot behold iniquity. Job said, I have a covenant with my God. My eyes will not look upon the virgin. Those are men that are doggedly separated from the world. This kind, they can bear the vessels of God. He said, if you are not clean, you cannot bear the vessels of God. Worldly men don't know what the oracles of God entails. Consecration will separate you from the world. Christianity is not drama. It is a spirit living out through a man. The name of that spirit is the Holy Ghost. The second way to deal with the world is to disciple them. Matthew 28 verse 18. Go into all the worlds and disciple all nations. Baptizing them in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Spirit. Teaching them all that you have learned from me. If your classmate is a smoker and you become a smoker, he discipled you. If your friend is a womanizer and you become a womanizer he discipled you if your friend is a drunk and you become a drunk he discipled you so many believers have been discipled by the world instead of us teaching them modest dressing we now take away our modest dress and we start wearing rag and then you see a pastor come to church his trouser is not on his waist he's here nowadays what pastors do is that they, they appear with Gucci trousers, Gucci shirt, Gucci watch, Gucci necklace, Gucci sneakers. And when they are preaching, they are doing like this. Because they are feeling like Eminem, Snoop Dogg. You see a pastor doing like this. Do you know his father in the Lord? His father in the Lord is Puff Daddy. That's why he dressed like him and acts like him. Because he's a discipler of the world system. But when you see a man who disciples the world, when you look at him, you know where he's coming from. He's a member of the ecclesia. He represents a constituency in the spirit. And when he shows up, you dare not come around him. He will contaminate what you came with. There are some who carry wisdom that you cannot defy, like Daniel. Daniel was in Babylon. Babylon could not corrupt him. They knew him for that record. When the king was confused, they said, go and look for Daniel. He said, in him is the spirit of the holy gods. He said, light and understanding dwells with this Daniel. He has the ability to explain hard sentences. And when Daniel showed up, they saw a writing that wrote on the wall that could not be explained. And so, when they knew that this wisdom is beyond the worldly, they had to look for the man that dwelt in the cave. And when Daniel showed up, he came like a wise man because they could not even read the writing. The reason is because that writing came from an alien world. And only the men who are separated enough can understand the language and the code of the realm beyond the Shamayim. And when, 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 when Daniel came, his separation was not a guise. He showed up and he didn't read the writing. He first of all began to tell the king how he has heard. Because at the time Daniel showed up, the Bible said the king's leg was shaken. 
Because when you see a man who is blazing with holiness, if he appears, he comes with the government of the realm where he represents. And when he talks, the weight and the glory of that realm follows him. He said, God blessed your father and gave him a kingdom that is from one end of the earth to another. He said, but you decided to worship the God of stone and the God of iron that have no life in themselves. He said, therefore, is this hand come? Mene, mene. Take care of our sin. And he began to interpret it. What was written in seven letters, interpretation was a sentence. Because what you call a code on earth is a language in the spirit. And he said, Mene, you have been weighed in the balances. Take care. He said, you have been found wanting. Oh, for sin, he said, tonight, your kingdom shall be divided from you among the medes and the patients. And when Daniel walked away, even the princes of Babylon knew that there was an ancient man among them. Because this one is not of earth. When men of the kingdom show up, the Bible said in Isaiah 55 verse 10, it said the trees of the field will clap their hand because we are the real stars of the world. The world is not supposed to be a star to us. We are the stars. He said the trees, because we are called the trees of righteousness. So the trees of the field are the peoples of the world. He said when we show up, they should clap. That's why Isaiah said, I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders. So when you show up, the world should be waiting for the next lesson. That's why he said, in the last day, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2, Micah chapter 4 verse 1, he said, the house of the Lord shall be upon the mountains of the Lord. He said, men of every nation shall say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, that they may teach us the ways of God. He said, out of Zion proceeds the law. In Obadiah 121, he says, Savior shall come from Mount Zion to teach the mountains of Ephesus the way that they should live. How come we have become disciples of the world system? It's because the world has entered our spirit. Today, somebody will be purged of the world. And one thing the cross came to do is to remove the lust of the world from your spirit. Because those things you desire that is not of the Holy Spirit is about to be removed from your inside. We are not intoxicated by the lust of the flesh. We are not intoxicated by the lust of the eyes. We are not intoxicated by the pride of life. He said, be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess? He said, be filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. There is something that intoxicates us. They are the lights beyond the stars. They are the wisdom that are tied in scrolls beyond time. And so a point comes through your separation from the world. Sometimes you journey the spirit and they introduce you to wise men of old. Sometimes you enter the spirit realm and they bring you to the room of scrolls. Where the secrets of God are kept. And then when they open a scroll to you, some scrolls are about a young that have existed before time. And some scrolls are about the world that is to come. This is why when Paul heard it, he said these things are unlawful to be uttered among men. Because some of the things Paul saw, they were not part of the earthly syllabus. They are part of the creation that should come when this creation is over. So you can't utter it in this creation. Because those are laws of another dispensation. But through intimacy, the man journeyed out of time and he touched things that are beyond. Things that are yonder. How come you are distracted by this noisy wall? You have not tasted of the glory that is to come. The Bible spoke of the powers of the ages to come. They said we are supposed to wield those powers now. But because the world have encycled and encumbered us, we have fallen into time. A generation will rise that the world cannot corrupt. When they show up, they will teach the world how to live their lives because these ones have power over the cosmos they have power over the ions and the god of this world cannot blindfold them because they hear sounds and echo from eternity they hear music from another realm hope you know that music is not about keyboard music is not about the drum when the when the cherub was analyzed in the courts of heaven the bible said thy taps and thy tablets were indeed from the day you were created there are certain music that are the strings of the heart of God. And so when God is in a mood, you will hear a sound from heaven. It will fill the atmosphere. And when you find out what is happening, they will tell you they are worshipping the monarch. The monarch. When you hear those sounds, nothing on earth can move you. Men are not separated. That's why they are lost in the noise of this world. They say, come up here. I will show you the things hereafter. The man had exhausted the syllables of time. He wanted to show him things of another dispensation. Come up, Peter. 
And when he was tall in heaven, he heard the voice of the seven thunder. He wanted to write. They said, no, don't write it. This one is not for men. This one is for people that can cross the dispensations. Men that can live edge into Zion. Those are the ones that have the right to look upon these sacred oracles. You don't know the things that are meant for your advantage. He said, eyes have not seen. He said, ears have not heard. Neither has he entered the heart of man. The things God has in stock for they that love him. Do you know the sounds of heaven? Have you seen the light that is brighter than the sun? Have you heard the echoes from the courts where the spirit of just men made perfect legislate the purposes of God? Have you come to that place where you see the stones that beam like the crystals of eternity? Isaiah said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And his glory, his glory, he filled the temple. And while he looked upon that glory, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I have mingled with the world system. And the way they purged him, he said, one of the seraphims took a tongue and picked one of the coals from the midst of the fire and touched his tongue. And he said, now you are purged. So you can touch a stone that purifies you. There are sounds you hear that you are translated. He said he heard a sound and a whirlwind took him to heaven. That means sounds are not for entertainment. Because in that realm, sound is an instrument of transport. And so there are certain sounds you hear and you find yourself in another dispensation. He said, I heard a voice as of a trumpet. And as I turned, a door opened. And suddenly before him, he saw seven golden lampstands. That means the sound is not for music. The sound is not for entertainment. The sound is a vehicle of transport. You don't know the things that are meant for us. Don't let the world distract you. Come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing. He said, they that bear the vessels of God, they must be holy. The first time, I saw the heavens. Oh, the Shamayim. Paul said, for me to live is Christ. Ah. The game is about the atmosphere of the other realm. The realm yonder. When you see the things that are beyond the skies, you will know that earth is corrupt. Yeah, yeah. It was... On one of my transport days into the spirit that they taught me that the office of the apostle his primary role is not in time. It was in one of my journeys to Zion that they told me that when an apostle completes his assignment, he becomes an angel in the world to come. Because an apostle is a messenger. It was on one of those journeys that I was taught that the job of a prophet is not word of knowledge. He said, prophet is a symbol of righteousness to a generation. So he carries the jealousy of God and the judgments of God. This is why prophets judge. Because when they show up, they bring the judgments of Zion. And he said, when a prophet is accurate, when his assignment is fulfilled on earth, he becomes an elder in the world to come. The office of a prophet is the office of an elder. But it takes separation. Hope you know that when Jesus was about to die, Moses and Elijah came and they were telling him what he should do in Jerusalem because those are elders of this age by the office of the prophet they have entered the seat of elders when you go to heaven in the next dispensation you will see them on thrones who told you that there is an advantage in time it is a distraction the pursuit the pursuit of the mundane is a deception wise men hunt for dimensions in the spirit that's why jesus said knock he said ask knock and seek because they are virgin dimensions thank god for how far paul went but there are things that paul have never seen thank god for how far enoch went but there are things that enoch have not seen so when we begin to seek like spiritual archaeologists we are searching for the virgin dimensions of the spirit because for every generation there is a heritage and that's why i say from the time of john there were elders before john but john wrestled in the spirit until he became 
the custodian of his dispensation. And the whole era was real to John. He said, from the time of John, such men had no time for the destruction of the world. That's why he said in Luke 1 8, he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. He was seeking the things that eyes cannot see. He was seeking the things that ears cannot hear. The things that only the spirit unveils. Hey, yeah. The enemy of the cross is the world system. It's not about fashion. It's about your soul. He wants to eat up your soul. And that's why Peter said, flee fleshly lost that war against your soul. When you understand the cross, you will be crucified to the world. And the world will be crucified to you. You still love the world. You are not ready to journey deep. The third enemy of the cross is Satan. The way to deal, to deal with Satan is twofold. Number one, in James chapter 4 verse 7, it says, submit to God. Submit to God. First Peter 5 verse 8, submit to God. If you are still struggling with the Holy Spirit, you are a pre. It says, Simon, Simon. Satan desires to have you, to sift you like wheat. That means without the Holy Spirit, in the battle arena, you are like wheat before the devil. Your weight in the Spirit is your consecration to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what makes you a healthy molecule that the devil can't carry. And so the first way to deal with Satan is to submit to God. When the Holy Ghost gives you instruction and you still rebel, you are not aware of the princes that walk in the corridors of the spirit realm. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. There are spirits that are called wickedness. Their name is what? Wickedness. When you allow them to have hold over you, they will mess your existence up. And this is why wise men hide. They say, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it therein and they are saved. And the way you run to the name of the Lord is through dogged submission in the place of prayer. Because him that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. The second way to, to fight the devil is to resist him. He say, resist him. He will flee from you. How do you resist the devil? It's not just to say in the name of Jesus, get out. It's not a demon. You rebuke demons because they don't have bodies. A Satan is a fallen angel. You don't cast him out. He walked up to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. The way to resist the devil is with the scriptures. The rema word of God. That's why I say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rema every proceeding word of god if you don't have the word of god in your spirit you will be like chaff before the wind you want to appropriate the cross through consecration you must deal with the flesh through separation you must deal with the world and through submission to the holy spirit you must deal with satan that is when truly you become victorious in life if you don't when we meet in heaven you will know what you missed God bless you.